If you've ever traveled by train in Canada, you'll know that while the views can be quite stunning, the trains aren't quite so breathtaking. Some of them have passenger cars old enough that they could have been featured in the bridge on the River Kwai. More importantly, our trains are slow. So, so slow. On the bright side, they do give you plenty of time to soak in those beautiful Canadian vistas. Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is Not Exactly Normal, and today we're talking about trains. Trains can be weird, right? There's a train that runs through this wide valley that is loved by one and all. It's the train that starts way up in Pixley called the Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> well, she makes her run through the dead of winter, through the summer, spring, and fall. Neither cold nor heat nor blood can stop her. She's the Hooterville Cannonball. If you were to take the train from Toronto to Montreal, it would take you about five hours to do the roughly 550 kilometer journey. About the same as it takes the drive. Shinkansen, or bullet trains in Japan, doing a roughly similar distance from Tokyo to Kobe, would do that journey in about two hours and 45 minutes. And that's with Aaron Taylor Johnson jumping up and down on the windshield. But it wasn't always like this. Canada used to have high-speed rail, and it was glorious. Sorry, I meant to say, it was supposed to be glorious. It was called the Turbo Train, and it was announced in the most spectacular, funky 1960s, 2001 Space Odyssey-inspired fashion. The stars, man is moving closer to them, using his knowledge to realize dreams he has held for centuries. The technology of the space age is helping to provide some of the answers to improving our mobility on Earth. One approach to meeting the needs of a more mobile society has been that taken by Canadian National Railways and United Aircraft Corporation. The result is a new stage in intercity transportation. This is actually the coolest announcement for a train that I've ever seen. Have I seen other train announcements? America, take a look at your country. Don't let the train go by. The only cooler train promo that comes to mind are the train Power Rangers, which exist and are awesome. As you can see from this montage of the wonderfully named turbo trains zipping across the screen, the turbo train was fast and funky looking. To get turbo from the drawing boards to the rails, hundreds of thousands of man hours were required. To cut one hour off normal running time, to take curves 30% faster, meant a new approach, letting requirements shape the vehicle entirely new from the ground up. These trains could reach a max speed of 274 kilometers an hour, which is 170% faster than the trains we're currently running. It wasn't the fastest train in the world, but for 1968, in Canada, it was pretty damn fast. Among the most distinctive features are the power dome cars at either end, 
They exemplify in their design much of the new thinking embodied in Turbo's construction. The fastest bullet trains in Japan can reach a real-world top speed of 320 kilometers an hour. But to hit those speeds, they need to run on special high-speed rail tracks. The cool thing about the Turbo Train was that they could run on standard tracks, and they didn't need expensive infrastructure updates in order to work. A ground rule in the development of Turbo was adaptability to existing rail facilities. The track remains the same. Everything else has changed. While this sounds absolutely amazing, quite what CN wanted you to feel when they produced that video, that speed of 274 kilometers an hour was only achieved in test conditions. And in real world use, the turbos would only run at most at 193 kilometers an hour, often running even slower than today's train's max speed of 160 kilometers an hour. This was due to the large number of crossings on its route, a problem that is also responsible for the slow speeds of our current fleet of trains. This meant that a journey that today takes us five hours to get from Toronto to Montreal in the 70s on a turbo train would take about four hours, a step in the right direction to competing with air travel and cars. Research has established that 80% of all travel takes place between cities up to 500 miles apart. With the probability in the near future of one great super city stretching from Chicago to New York, 800 million people living in the ruin of the old world and the mega structures of the new one. Mega blocks. Mega highways. Mega city one. Or Windsor to Montreal. Rail facilities offer a potential solution to mass transportation problems. And that was the whole point. These trains were a bid to get the public interested again in taking the train. Do you travel this route often, sir? My wife and I have traveled it about average three times a year for the last five or six years. Do you also fly? I fly, yes. Which do you prefer? I prefer the train, frankly. Why? It's more convenient. I think less problem getting to the terminals. It's cheaper. And I, I guess I like trains better than, than airplanes. Following the Second World War, as highway networks were expanded and air travel became more affordable, passenger rail took a real nosedive in Canada, losing more than half its yearly average passengers by 1960. Did you ever think of a locomotive as lazy? Does sound mighty strange. But as a matter of fact, Nothing in this world likes to get going. And so, in an effort to win back the people, CN created the Turbo Train, which was not only meant to be fast, but came equipped with a slick exterior, a futuristic interior, and most dastardly, good food. Microwave ovens cook hot food specialties in a matter of seconds. Before installation on Turbo, prototype galleys and cafe cars were built, and all menu items tested in experimental food labs. Even better is that the trains definitely only caught fire a couple times. <laughs> but it wasn't just the cool swivel chairs and the futuristic microwave steak. They also really wanted to push that they only hire turbo hotties. Turbo Club service is symbolized by its hostesses. Young and exciting. Made more so by their fashionable clothes designed with a boutique flair. Ah yes, the best part about rapid transit. The fashion. Sorry, the turbo fashion. The Turbo Ensemble is an easy but elegant answer to the wardrobe requirements of the Turbo hostesses. Yet despite how turbo every aspect of the turbos were, they didn't last very long. On their maiden voyage, they blew right through a truck in Kingston. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured, and their first five years didn't get much better than that. After their smashing debut in December of 68, the turbos had to be shut down about a month later due to their brakes freezing. Those first five years of their lifespan were plagued with technical issues as well as fires, resulting in on-again, off-again suspended service until CN finally sorted out most of the issues by 1973. I found that the train, this is the turbo I'm speaking of primarily, is just not consistently on time. And it's very disappointing to me, who, who likes trains and likes traveling this train. By the time CN rolled out the turbo train, the writing was already on the wall for passenger rail in Canada, and the other major national rail company, Canadian Pacific, had already begun scaling back their passenger train business, aiming to get out of the game entirely. But since CN was owned by the government, they were forced to keep their dwindling passenger business going. This became an election issue for Pierre Trudeau, and his government promised to create a national passenger rail service. And so, in 1978, Via Rail was born, and everyone loved it. Except they didn't, and don't. Since April 1st, all passenger train service in Canada has been controlled by VIA, a government agency. Last night, City Pulse took you on a trip aboard the Rapido to Montreal. 
Tonight, we take a look at the actual changeover of CN's colors to the blue and gold of Via. The old color of Canadian National used to be the off green and the green lines and the Canadian maple leaf with the red lettering. They then changed, of course, to what we know as CN today, and this is the bright red, the off white, and the black. But let's take this car, follow it through, and see how we wind up with a Via car instead of this particular car. The problem with Via Rail was how it was created in the first place. When CN spun off its passenger rail service as Via Rail, it kept ownership of all the railway tracks, which wasn't really a big deal at the time because they were both crown corporations. But in the 1990s, when CN went private, Via Rail's needs took a real backseat to CN's freight business. Which means that today, passenger trains in Canada must yield to freight trains, which can add hours to a passenger train's journey, regardless of its speed. Not only that, but because Virail was never legislated in Parliament, their budget is much more at the whim of the current party in power than other crown corporations. This resulted in massive service cuts in the 80s and 90s, which saw even further reductions in people taking the train. In 1988, more than 6 million people took the train. That's one quarter of this country's population. More than half a million traveled aboard the Silver Dome Liner, the Canadian. In 1989, the Mulroney government cut this country's premier tourist attraction, leaving Calgary, Banff, and Lake Louise without daily passenger train service. While this didn't have as much bearing back in the day of the turbo train when CN was still owned by the government, it would have proved to be another nail in the coffin for the turbo train, as well as for the future of high-speed rail in Canada today, as it doesn't really matter how fast your train is if you still have to pull over for a train full of rocks to pass. By the time Via Rail was created, there were only three turbo trains left in the fleet, and a year later, one of those would catch fire. Tomorrow night, we'll take a look at something entirely new in the train field, something that has been running here for at least a couple of years, successfully, that is. Now it's coming under Via, and it's called the Turbo Train. Since the infrastructure never allowed for the Turbo Train to actually go turbo, they never saw the skyrocket in use that they were hoping for, as people continued to prefer to drive or fly. Have you traveled on the train recently? This is the first time in about 10 years. I always fly or drive. Why? It's faster to fly. So by 1982, with all the barriers these trains had faced, it was easier just to replace them with not so turbo trains. Why are you going from Toronto to Montreal this time by train? That'd be fun to try it out. The other thing that killed the turbo train was something that made it attractive in the first place. Gas. The heart of turbo is the ST6 gas turbine engine. When assembled, it weighs only 300 pounds, yet it delivers 400 horsepower for turbo. The price of gas over diesel and the lighter gas-powered engine initially made the turbo quite attractive from an operating cost perspective. But in 1973, when the fuel crisis hit, its diesel-powered competitors became much more appealing. And soon, the price of gas made the turbo fleet too turbo-expensive to justify expanding on. But for a while there, we had high-speed rail in Canada. At least we did in theory. The idea of a high-speed train that doesn't require infrastructure updates in order to use sounds really appealing on paper, but in reality, if you want high-speed rail, you need buy-in on all fronts. But hey, even at reduced speeds, it was still about an hour faster to get to Montreal. I mean, if Via Rail built their own line with less crossings, could they match that time with a slower train? Probably. Via Rail is in the process of upgrading their fleet on the corridor, with trains pulled by charger locomotives, which are about 25% faster than the current fleet. But due to regulations, they're only allowed to run at the same speed they always have. Womp womp. As much as the turbo train ultimately failed, or more accurately, we failed it, if you watch to the end of their promo video, they do say that the turbo train was just the first step. Turbo itself is considered a first step, not a final solution. Tomorrow. Could be wheels will be the next to go, and passengers will travel on a cushion of air. Whatever the answer is, Turbo is helping to bring it closer. Though while we may never see high-speed rail again in Canada, at least we'll always have this super funky dance montage from a video from the 1970s announcing a new type of train. Behind the beat, the beads, the beards, and the miniskirts, living patterns are changing. The vast majority of people have become urban dwellers, people on the move. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes once a month-ish. 
Thanks for watching. The bright red, the off white, and the black. John A. Macdonald, our first Prime Minister, created a national railway system. It is now true to say that Brian Mulroney, the current Conservative Prime Minister, is the man who destroyed it.